Hey, my friends, Tony back again. Want to share with you a little bit about sports. I am a huge sports fan. If you're a sports fan, put a like or put a comment in. We'd love to know if you're a sports fan. But me, I'm a huge sports fan, so I go to a lot of events. I go to events here locally in Utah, like college football, go Utes, uh, you know, the, junior, or the Utah Jazz. We go to a lot of sporting events. And my son, my two sons, my 10-year-old and my 6-year-old, they go with me. They go with me to a lot of events. And, and I want to share with you something that happened at a previous Jazz playoff game. We go to this Jazz playoff game, and we're, we're sitting there, and I've taken my whole family. This was my son's birthday present. And, and we're sitting there. And obviously, the refs had blown the call, completely blown it. It was, it was a horrible call. And the whole crowd erupts. Refs, you suck. Just the whole crowd is just nailing down on these refs and, and just berating them with, with comments and, and just this loud chant of ref, you suck. And uh, my son looked up at me, and I wasn't saying anything. I wasn't chanting anything. Now, you take me five years ago, I would have jumped right in. I was in that chant. But since five years ago, since really starting to understand the power of people and energy and all of these different things that I teach, I realized that that human being is an actual human being. They, are, they feel human emotions just like you and me do. And can you imagine if you are sitting there with 15,000 people telling you you suck? how hard that must be. And so I'm one less voice that jumps in. And my son looked at me, he saw that I wasn't chanting and he quietly didn't chant either. And and the thing that I really wanted to teach my son is twofold. Number one, that's a human being down there. Let's teach respect. But number two, we live in a society that in order to defend something, they have to not only cheer on what they believe in, but they have to diminish what everybody else believes in. They have to tear other people down in order to build their belief system up. And uh, we, it happens in politics. It happens in athletics. It happens in school systems. It happens in companies. It happens in families. It happens all over the world. That in order to prove me right, I have to prove you wrong. And I have to take you down. And uh, I want you to know that if you have a cause you are out there defending, that the best way to defend your cause is to be pro-cause, not anti whatever somebody else believes about your cause. And when you just own your cause and you're pro cause, that's when a magic will happen in the world today. That's when today in this society that we're in, we could all come together. We could all come together. I'll end, I'll end with one quote by Mother Teresa. Mother T- Teresa was, was asked once if she would go and, and do an anti rally or an anti war demonstration. And she says, I never, ever will be involved in that. But if you do a pro-peace demonstration or rally, I'll be there. So I would ask you, are you pro-peace or anti-war? And that, the answer to that question, will make a world of difference in your life. Are you the one that quietly holds back when everyone else is chanting? Or do you stand and rise when your team is winning and cheer them on? And when they're not, you don't boo. You don't tell the other team they suck. You just hold on. You hold your peace. You hold your tongue. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this segment today. This is for my little 10-year-old, my 10-year-old Jack. and, And that is, I love you, buddy. And keep practicing this idea of we are pro what we like and not anti what we don't like. We cheer for those that we like. We don't boo those things that we don't like. Uh, I hope you can take the same advice in your life.